Hello, this is Wendy Lightheart, and today we are going to talk about the multiplication property of equality. First, recall that the addition property of equality says that we can add or subtract the same number or algebraic expression to both sides of an equation without changing the solutions. Similarly, the multiplication property says that we can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number or algebraic expression without changing the solutions. In other words, if we have an equation a equals b, where a and b are some algebraic expressions, and c is an algebraic expression not equal to zero, then a times c equals b times c. And it also means if a is equal to b, again where a and b represent some algebraic expressions, and c is some non-zero algebraic expression, then a divided by c is equal to b divided by c. Let's use this property to solve some equations. Remember that whenever we're solving an equation, the goal is to eventually get the variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And many times this amounts to undoing the operations that are being done to the variable. For this example, x is being divided by 7. So we would use the opposite operation to undo the division, which is multiplication. Thus, we can use the multiplication property that says we can multiply both sides by 7. And the 7s will cancel each other out, leaving the x by itself, which is what we wanted. Now, simplifying both sides, we get x equals negative 21. Thus, our solution set for this equation has one solution of negative 21. Let's look at another example. For this one, notice that x is being multiplied by 2 thirds. We could undo this multiplication by dividing both sides by 2 thirds. However, recall that dividing by a fraction is actually the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. Thus, we can multiply both sides by 3 halves to get the x by itself. Notice that the 3's will cross cancel and the 2's will cross cancel, which will leave us with x on the left side, which is what we wanted. We can also do some cross reducing on the other side since 2 goes into 8 4 times and 2 goes into itself once. Now we simplify both sides which leaves us with x equals 12. So this equation has a solution set that includes one solution of 12. Here's an equation where x is being multiplied by negative 5. We can undo this multiplication by dividing both sides by negative 5 to get x by itself. We simplify both sides to obtain our solution, which is x equals 2.1. Thus, this equation has a solution set that includes one solution of 2.1. We will now look at an example where we, we will need to use both the addition property and the multiplication property to solve the equation. Notice that we have both multiplication and subtraction to undo to isolate the x. Recall that the order of operation says that the multiplication is being done before the subtraction. So that means we need to undo these operations in the opposite order they're being performed. So we need to first undo the subtraction, which we can do by adding 13 to both sides. This will give us 6x on one side and 44 on the other. Now we're ready to undo the multiplication, which we do by dividing both sides by 6. We simplify both sides. 
which includes reducing the fraction on the right side. And we obtain our solution of 22 thirds, or we could write that as a mixed number, 7 and 1 third. Sometimes we'll have some work to do before we can undo operations to isolate, isolate x, just like this example here. For example, if we have variable terms on both sides of the equation, we need to first get them together on one side, and we need to do the same for the constant terms, which, we, which may be on both sides. We will use the addition property to move terms to the other side of the equal sign. And keep in mind that the goal is that we want the variable terms on one side of the equal sign and the constant terms on the other side of the equal sign. So for this example, we could decide to move the variable terms to the left side first. To do that, we can subtract the positive 3x from both sides and the three x's will cancel on the right side, which will leave us with the variable term on the left of two x, and then we have plus six still on the left, and that's equal to negative six on the right. Now we can move the constant terms to the right side, because remember we want them on the opposite side of the variable term, and we do this by undoing the addition of six that appears on the left by subtracting both sides or six on both sides. The sixes will cancel and this gives us 2x equals negative 12. So now we have one last step and that is to undo the division or undo the multiplication with division by dividing both sides by 2. Simplifying both sides gives us x equals negative 6. Let's look at the same equation again. Remember that last time we decided to move the variable terms to the left side first. Suppose we instead move them to the right side, which we can do by subtracting 5x from both sides. And the 5x's will cancel, giving us 6 equals negative 2x minus 6. Now since we decided to move the variable terms to the right side, we must now move the constant terms to the left side. Thus, we're going to have to undo the subtraction of 6 on the right side, which we do by adding 6 to both sides. The 6's on the right will now cancel, leaving us with 12 equals negative 2x. And this leaves us with one more step, which is to undo the multiplication by negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2 and we simplify. And notice that we end up with the same solution set that we did last time. Thus, it doesn't really matter whether you move the variable terms to the right or the left as long as you move the constant terms to the opposite side. Each new equation is a new situation and with practice you'll be able to figure out what works best for you and what works best for each new situation. That's it for now. See you in class.